Welcome to CB8 Speaks. My name is Ellen Pallavi. I'm a member of the Manhattan Community Board 8. This is the second of a two-part series interviewing the co-chairs of the Community Board 8 Roosevelt Island Committee. Today, we will focus on issues of Roosevelt Island governance. It is my pleasure to introduce you to two committed community leaders, co-chairs Jeffrey Escobar and Larry Parnes. Jeffrey Escobar is an attorney specializing in real estate and construction law at Proskauer. He is current president of the Roosevelt Island Residents Association. Larry Parnes was former deputy director for the Department of City Planning. Most people who don't live on Roosevelt Island, and some who do, have no idea about the island. So I'll tell you a bit. Roosevelt Island is three miles long and 800 feet wide at its widest point. It has a, it has a suburban feel. Our commute, a three minute F train ride to Manhattan's Upper East Side, or a peaceful tram ride over the East River, or car ride over the 59th Street Bridge. It has a population of 12 to 14,000 people, depending on who you talk to. Physically, the road and the bus leads to Queens. We drive over the 59th Street Bridge from Queens to get to Manhattan. Politically, our elected officials and our services come from Manhattan, except for fire and police, which are from Queens. We use the metro card on the subway, bus, and tram, but our red bus that circulates on the island is free. Just became free. But our parking increased. We have virtually no violent crime. The feel is quiet, but the residents have that New York energy. Larry, can you tell our viewers about our unusual political structure and island governance? Sure. The city in the late 1970s leased most of the land, which was city-owned on Roosevelt Island, uh, to the state. Uh, this was to facilitate development of the residential community that, that's uh, evolved since the 19, 1976. Um, that land that's under the control of the state um, is not subject to a lot of the city review procedures and processes. It's not subject to the city building codes. Mm -hmm. Although, as Ellen pointed out, we get our um, utilities from the city, uh, things like parks, things like the roadways, things like the sidewalks are and the streets are maintained by the current uh, operator, the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation. They get no funding from the city. They get no funding from the state. All of the members of the, op the board of directors of the uh, Operating Corporation are appointed by the governor. So when decisions are made, who uses a particular store, what kind of store should go in there, um, what should we do with a particular vacant look site? All of those decisions ultimately are made by the board of directors of REOC. None of those are elected. And some of those decisions, if you were not living on Roosevelt Island, would be normally made by your council members or somebody who is elected. And that's a major issue on Roosevelt Island. So Larry, you were elected in the community-wide election in uh, in this this past election cycle, which was 2012, um, and you were elected to be appointed by the governor to a seat on the REAC board. Could you please explain that strange indirect way of getting on the board? Maybe Jeff, as president of REAC, since uh, that's the entity that handles these elections, should explain that process. I mean. For lack of a better thing, very simplistically, the Resident Roosevelt Island Resident Association had recognized um, this disparity and has, you know, been working in two ways, both in trying to get legislation through um, the state to uh, require that there be direct elections, um, and also have the eligibility to be on the board reflect that you have to be a resident or you know, a member of the community of Roosevelt Island. Uh, and then secondly, to basically seek, uh, seek direct elections, um, much like you would here in city council and whatnot, to be seated on the board. Because that is still winding its way through the process, because RERA is still lobbying for that to happen, and it's been lobbying since for God only knows how long, uh, a way that we've been able to do so 
um, as the resident association has been able to do so, is basically hold elections to get a, sl a slate of candidates available from which the governor and uh, the governor would be able to select uh, from and appoint. Uh, we present that uh, so that slate to the governor directly. We say we held the elections on this in the state. Uh, that this is the number of votes here, and in order of the number of vote getters, these are the individuals that need to be placed on the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation's board um, as these seats become vacant. Um, and so, much like as much like how the community board eight would. Given advisory, it's much an advisory from RIRA, but it's one in which we've polled the community as to who should be seated on RIOC. Right. And what did you hope to accomplish on RIOC? Uh, that's a difficult question because I was, I, right now, it, it's over two years right. since I ran for that position, and uh, I don't believe the governor uh, has made any appointments from any of the RIRA selections. And in fact, all uh, the seats are expired, if I remember correctly. So yeah. it's. Uh, and the current um, board members serve until they've been replaced or until they resign. Uh, I was just hoping to, uh, again, um, use some of my planning background to um, uh, help, the, help uh, ultimate, ultimately make better decisions um, and uh, hear from the residents more than what happens now, even though the residents do, do make a to speak at sometimes of these react meetings, they're not that directly involved in the decision making process, and I think that's the important thing to get involved for me to get involved in the de actual decision making process and be more reflective of the residents of the island rather than the corporation itself. Okay. Right now, we have six members of um, six community members on the uh, the react board, and I see them working pretty hard. Uh, um, in, on behalf of the residents, you know, they take, they've been, they've been working on the daily issues that come up with uh, with running the island, and I, and my husband is one of them. So I think, and I see him on the phone all the time mm -hmm. with uh, with the REAC president. So I, I think that it's it's working. It's working. It mean it could be working better in in terms of being more direct elections. But it is working to have Roosevelt Island residents right. taking part in the in the actual governance of the island. Um, Jeff, would you explain to our viewers what um, what the community board does? Sure. I mean, in very simple terms, the, the community board was authorized by the city charter, um, and each borough has a number of districts or community boards within it. Um, the members of the community board, uh, there are about 50 members on each board, and they comprise of individuals that have been appointed by the city council members and or the borough president of that um, specific district. And basically, they, they are an integral part in issue recommendations of everything from land use actions uh, that come through that get voted upon by the borough board and by city council, um, the ULA process we've been discussing before, everything from that to, you know, enjoy, uh, enjoyment of life issues, health, parks issues, um, issues concerning uh, nightlife and restaurant and, al and you know, alcohol and cafe type of permits, um, and the environment. So, I mean, each board is very unique in itself. They all have their own, um, you know, enabling statute and enabling a constitution in which it sets forth what communities exist and what issues they'll, you know, they're going to be looking at. Um, and then as these issues arise, as the communities look forward to form an opinion recommendation, the board comes together, um, you know, each month, uh, has committee meetings and sets forth resolutions and recommendations um, to the city agencies. What ends up happening is then it's the city agencies who are left with enforcing these recommendations. So because of our unique political situation on Roosevelt Island, with REAC kind of in the middle of everything, can the community board exert as much pressure on Roosevelt Island and have as much impact on Roosevelt Island as in the rest of the city? I think it's different. Uh, certainly the community board's role is very is minimal uh, on discretionary things. And fortunately for the island, the piece of property on which Cornell is building uh, is not part of the lease, and therefore it was subject to ULA. But if that property was part of the lease,
would have been no ULERP for that project. Um, I think the, the, the community board certainly uh, can weigh in on other issues that, right. that take place within the jurisdiction of REAC and outside of the jurisdiction, but I think it's harder uh, within the REAC uh, jurisdiction. I wouldn't categorize the impacts as being minimal, though, because I think that the reality is that they, for so long, the Roosevelt Island has existed in the sense that they've thought of themselves separate, not separate and apart, no, but unto itself. And I think that it's important, and at least what my goal has always been, um, is to really integrate these entities, uh, RIRA, RIOC, and Community Board, together to understand that they all interplay in the fabric that makes up Roosevelt Island. You know, we're still, though we're the, our, the little ship flowing in the middle of the East River, we're still part of Community Board 8, we're still part of the Upper East Side. I think a, a, a good example of where we can really focus on those kind of issues are, for example, the Marine Transfer Station. I mean, RIRA and the Roosevelt Island has been, because we've been so preoccupied with Cornell, we haven't been really interplaying with the community board in tackling this issue. And quite frankly, I mean, if you look at the environmental reports, we're talking about how the barging of the tra of trash upriver, actually the pollutants would be exponentially increase and decrease the life and quality of life on Roosevelt Island. I think people become much more involved in the community boards. So, and I think that it goes both ways because oftentimes in the community board, you know, we'll raise an issue that say, well, on Roosevelt Island, this has become an issue. And a lot of the members will say, oh, but that's, it's Roosevelt Island. That's not, we don't, we don't have exert any influence there. I think we need to change that culture, quite frankly. Being a chair of a committee gives you such opportunity to get things done. Do you, can you give us some ideas of your objectives for the committee? Well, we're not, uh, the committee was set up uh, after we had a special Roosevelt uh, Cornell task force, and um, we were, con we were con reconstituted as the Roosevelt Island Committee so we could deal with other uh, island issues, and we actually have dealt with uh, other island issues. We have a bus service uh, that runs to Queens, the Q102 right. bus. Right. Uh, there, were, there were complaints about the service. We had a committee meeting and invited uh, representatives of MTA to come and hear the issues and hear some of our thoughts on that. We had another committee meeting uh, which discussed uh, a traffic study that the Department of City Planning is doing that affects the Roosevelt Island Bridge, which is the only vehicular way on and off the island. So uh, they came and made a presentation to us. Right. So we're not limited to um, the the uh, Cornell project and any items that come up which we think might be uh, uh, appropriate for the committee to deal with, uh, right. we'd be happy to hear. Right. I mean, I think by and large, it's really, we are looking to really increase the profile and the need for city services to the island and how that affects us and whether it be through infrastructure and transportation, that has been kind of the large focus of what we're doing now. I think we can increase that too. You know, environmental impacts because I think we'll be going to be very much affected both by the different construction projects on the island itself and then also what's happening now on the Upper East Side with the proliferation of construction projects happening there. Um, and then also just, you know, transportation issues dealing with the individual commute times of, of individual, you know, members of the community. Uh, we could, I think that those are by and large are kind of what we're tasked with because that's what the city's in charge of and what we can petition the city for. I remember at one at one meeting when you were talking when you had some people from the MTA over at, to talk to us about the Queens 102 bus. Mm -hmm. um, we had a member of the of RERA, um, uh, some members of the of RERA came and gave some very good suggestions about how to have the bus turn around over the bridge. Right. And I, I think that shows a good a good interplay between RERA. The residents' association and the and the community board. Do you, how do you there see? There was also addition. In addition right. to there was also RIOC came to that meeting and offered its suggestions. Oh, that's so, right. The, mm -hmm. that's it made, right. made it very the clear that their right made it very clear that their their bus schedules are reliant upon the Q one and two's bus services and their schedules to lessen the impacts on their on their uh, buses so that everyone is getting equal you know transportation without that interplay between the community RIOC and RIRA and I think it's a good example of why the community board is relevant on the island without that interplay um, and the different points of view that conversation would have never been had so um, I think that you know we do it. I think we're, we're beginning to do it justice as to what the community committee should be doing and serving on the island.
so that was a, that's your primary objective of, of the Roosevelt Island Committee. Um, what types of efforts do you do to uh, to have those objectives be met? Do you have what kinds of have, what kinds of programs do you run? Right now, largely, we're doing. We are kind of mon we're closely monitoring. Um, you know what the other what other committees that are specified with specific topics, like transportation, for example, parks. What they are doing. What the overlays are with Roosevelt Island. I mean, I, the, unfortunately, with everything that's happening with Cornell, it it takes up a lot of our time and our resources to do that. I think what we after, once we've established kind of a regular system, back and forth of you know determining which topics are ones that the community should be tackling or not, um, we'll be getting to have a lot more outreach, you know, and making sure that the community attends, is aware of the meetings, um, in that, uh, and, and becomes an integral part of both of the community board and the Upper East Side as well. There are committees of community board eight that um, have reviewed issues relative to Roosevelt Island. Um, there is a education committee right. and the um, principal of the Roosevelt Island School uh, attended their committee meeting. When it's appropriate, we've had we've had a joint we've had a joint meeting with um, an, the transportation committee uh, to make sure that uh, we have the hearing the issue right. discussed on the island um, and um, island people are made aware of. I think when the when the uh, city bike program further expands uh, and decides they might want to uh, locate on Roosevelt Island, which was actually proposed by the Transportation Committee before the Roosevelt Island Committee was set up. Probably it's something we'd meet again in relation to that. But I also think we could do a better job, quite frankly, in making sure that all those issues, when they come before the other committees, that we, you know, for lack of better word, just culturally make sure that all the other committees, the first thought process they have is that they should be jointly having that meeting with the Roosevelt Island Committee. I mean, you know, with no disrespect at all to our esteemed chairs for the other department, for the other committees, but, you know, for example, when the issues concerning Goldwater could come up and the displacement um, of certain of, of the residents there, and you know it dovetails with the development of the hospital up on the Upper East Side that was going to accept a lot of these. A lot of those meetings should have jointly been held with uh, with uh, with our committee, um, and you know we could have done a better job in making sure that that was what's going to end up happening. I would say the same thing with education. I think that's probably the next frontier for us, is because the public school is going to be you know is going to be impacted both with the infusion of talent and resources that Cornell is going to be presenting, but also just with the fact that the population, with the advent of the three new towers from related at the southern part of the island, is going to increase the population and attract more families. I think education is going to be a bigger issue um, for us, uh, and improvement of our schools as well. You know, the middle school program, the uh, you know the elementary school program, all these are things that are not just Roosevelt Island issues, they're citywide larger issues held by other communities, but when they come before those communities, we really need to make sure that they come before us as well. Okay. So, Jeff, you're current president of the Roosevelt Island Residents Association. Could you explain, I know we've talked about RERA before, could you explain to the viewers what RERA is and how it, came, and how it right. operates on the island? So. RERA is a 501c4 um, nonprofit corporation that basically was in charge, uh, it was chartered and created to give a voice to all residents of the island. So by matter of its bylaws and constitution, every single individual who resides on Roosevelt Island is a member of RERA. Now, RERA is uh, led by a uh, common council in which each of the buildings have a set number of representatives that they elect to represent them on the Common Council. And so when we talk about we remember kind of overall talking about the larger organization, but um, and when in fact we're also really talking about the Common Council, which is comprised of you know, a number of almost 40, 40 individuals elected island-wide by the 10,000 plus residents to represent their interests. Um, and RERA itself, much like Community Board 8, passes, recommend, takes up resolutions, has committees very similar to Community Board 8, uh, and passes resolutions and petitions and lobbies through Roosevelt Island Corporation because it's the governing agency for us there um, to undertake a lot of the issues that they see. So everything from public safety because of the public safety issues that we have on the island to 
you know, uh, to uh, planning ser island services and uh, planning services, all of those are issues that the islander takes through its committees. Like the, like the community board, RERA has an advisory role, an advocacy role, but For, only an advocacy and advisory role. Is that yeah, correct? I, think, mm -hmm. I think that's correct. I think the difference is that um, the community board is institutionalized as in the city charter. Right. And community groups like RERA are not. Right. Um, the difference, again, being that on Roosevelt Island, the, the most significant part of the island is not, rep is not represented by elected people. Right, right, You're right. And I, and I would agree. I think that it, it is, that's the, the bigger difference. And the unfortunate aspect of it is that there, it's not folded in and enabled by, statu by statute. The city charter formally recognizes community boards basically as the conduit through which um, recommendations are made relative to, to the community. And statutorily, so, throughout, throughout and, and statute, statute right. require, requires the community board's approval on certain actions and whatnot. Certainly or, requires community board, uh, board recommendations, vote and recommendations yeah. depending on the particular um, action. On Roosevelt Island, the, the property that's under the jurisdiction of REOC does not have to even um, consult the Residents Association. And as I said, said in the uh, earlier, that those members on the REOC board who vote and make those decisions on what funding should be should get spent, uh, should be spent where, when should we fix the paving on Main Street. Those decisions are made by appointed people who currently are not properly elected. So there is a, a, a lack of a voice mm -hmm. in that, in the, the decision making process as it relates to RIA. Great. Understood. Understood. So how does RERA then get its voice heard? I mean, by quite largely by community involvement and by its lobbying power, you know, in ensuring and representing itself as representative of the island. I mean, you know, because there, because as Larry had pointed out, there isn't a direct representation and direct election. RERA is, quite frankly, even though it may be, you know, a nonprofit corporation, is one in which it is directly elected by the members of the uh, Roosevelt Island Resident Association Common Council are directly elected by all residents on the island. So from what you're saying then, it's it's actually important for RIRA to speak with one voice when dealing with RIOC so that RIOC understands that RIRA has already done the right. hard work of coming to a mm -hmm. consensus and then has presented to RIOC what it's interested in hearing right. and what it's interested in having so that we are, can potentially act on that. I mean, the mere fact that people who sit on the Common Council and its ex and executive board are widely elected, popularly elected, is, the I think, a very powerful component that we all just can't can't ignore. You know, you cannot say to a, an organization in which over 10,000 people have voted or 10,000 people have, heard, have elected um, and said these are the people who represent our interests to you to then close the door and, and say, that's great, we're not going to listen to you. Um, in fact, you know, as an operating corporation, it's, you know, I think would, I would beg to say that it's within their duties to you know, listen to the voice that, of the individuals that have been asked by the community to lead them. Uh, so yes, I mean, I understand the point that they are not, it's not authorized by an enabling statute, but the way that the individuals and how they're comprised and how they sit on the Common Council, um, I think carries a lot of weight in the legitimacy and the power movement that it's able to, mm -hmm. to substantiate itself with. And how can RERA best interface with the community board? So before I came on to the community board, before I was elected and joined RERA, it seemed to me that there wasn't really a lot of open dialogue. Um, it seemed to me that they're always, they seem desperate, disparate and separate um, in themselves. And I think that we've gone a long way in at least 
beginning to create this first cross understanding that we are all working under the same interests and there isn't any you know, turf wars between what community board does and what the Roosevelt and what the Roosevelt Island Resident Association does. Um, I think we can better utilize that by having both an institutional memory of members who sit on both, um, who are active in both, and I think that RERA itself can do a better job by having you know, regular reports of what the community board has passed, what they're doing right now, what how it affects the island, um, you know, and, and and make those reports because without those, you know, the, the residents by and large would not probably would not know, or they would know, but it would come through other sources rather than directly from the the community board. I think it would be helpful, quite frankly, if the community board had, and maybe this is something that we should do, is have a liaison, who much like at the public sessions with all the public representatives, give you know a report to what's been going on, even just a short summary, whether it be written or whether it be an oral report to us. I mean, I'm oftentimes just kind of constrained to what I can say sitting up there and chairing the committee meeting because by that point, you know, we're moving on with the business and not at that point where I can be reporting under the differing hat. Um, and so if we have that cross-pollination, I think then you would have a really strong base uh, representative of city life throughout both institutions. Yes, so you're suggesting at your rear meetings that a report be made from... Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, we have to stop. Um, Larry Parnes, Jeff Escobar have been, have been sharing with us about Roosevelt Island issues. And, I, and I'm Ellen Pollaby. Thank you both for coming. Thank you all for coming and listening to us today.